It's been a while since we have continued our look at the entire career of The Undertaker, so let's get back to it. We've covered everything from the 90s right up until the debut of The American Badass. We just left off at The King of the Ring in 2000. Let's pick it up from here then. The Undertaker and Kane both had an opportunity to become the WWF Champion in the King of the Ring main event, but The Rock ended up winning the gold. From here, The Undertaker and Kane would challenge for the Tag Team Championships, but soon enough, the brothers of the Destruction would once again begin feuding with each other. On the Raw is War episode following the King of the Ring, the Brothers of Destruction dominated the WWF Tag Team Champions Edge and Christian in a non-title match. Thanks to this victory, Kane and Taker got a tag title shot the very next week on Raw. However, Edge and Christian's friend Kurt Angle made an appearance, costing the Brothers of Destruction the Tag Team Championships. This led to The Undertaker having a match against Angle at the fully loaded pay-per-view. The American Badass was able to defeat Kurt in a fun match. Kurt Angle had some serious anxiety at this show. He was afraid of what The Undertaker might do to him and this resulted in an entertaining match. The next night on Raw, Kurt Angle, The Big Show and Shane McMahon attacked The Undertaker backstage, resulting in Shane McMahon smashing a cinder block across The Undertaker's knee. You'd think this would be some sort of way to get The Undertaker off TV for a while, but The Dead Man returned on the August 7th episode of Raw to get revenge on his attackers. I'm assuming here that The Undertaker thought he needed time off but it wasn't necessary because when he came back he was put into a last minute feud in order to get the American Badass featured on the SummerSlam card. This feud kicked off on the August 14th episode of Raw, a mere two weeks before SummerSlam. After Shane McMahon interfered in Taker's match with Chris Benoit on this evening, the big red machine Kane ran out to help his brother. After clearing the ring, Kane Choke slammed his brother out of nowhere, followed by another choke slam that put The Undertaker through the ring. And so it looked like we were going to get another Kane vs. Undertaker match at the SummerSlam show. To further add to the theory that this was thrown together at the last minute, the Brothers of Destruction were tagging up again in a matter of months. And while the WWF did get a little mileage out of this Kane vs. Undertaker feud, there was nothing really substantial here at all. Anyway, on the August 17th episode, Episode of SmackDown, Kane took the time to explain why he choke slammed his brother. The Big Red Machine said he attacked The Undertaker because Kane accepts the fact that he himself is a monster, and this explanation wasn't enough for the American badass. Undertaker came out looking for some answers, but Kane once again got the upper hand, attacking his brother this time with a steel chair. And so Kane and Taker went into SummerSlam and their match was a little underwhelming. The bout ended in a no contest when The Undertaker removed Kane's mask, forcing the devil's favourite demon to run away to the backstage area. There are plenty of Kane vs Undertaker matches out there, you can do better than their SummerSlam 2000 encounter. Taker was trying to get Kane's mask off for a good portion of their 7 minute match and it felt like Taker was doing this because there really wasn't any other story or angle going into this match. Anyway, the Kurt Angle vs Undertaker feud resumed after SummerSlam but before Taker could get his hands on the Olympic gold medalist, the American Badass got involved in a fatal 4 way match for the WWF Championship at the Unforgiven pay per view, a good main event here that saw The Rock retain the gold in a bout that also featured Kane and Chris Benoit. At the No Mercy show, Kurt Angle was able to defeat The Rock to become the new WWF Champion, and his first challenger on pay-per-view would be none other than The Undertaker. Taker defeated Chris Jericho, Kane and Chris Benoit in a fatal four-way match on the November 9th episode of SmackDown to become the number one contender, and at the Survivor Series, Taker and Angle would have a great WWF Championship match. In the closing moments of this bout, Kurt Angle disappeared under the ring, and when Taker got Angle back inside the squared circle, the referee noticed that this wasn't Kurt Angle at all. Angle had switched places with his brother Eric Angle while under the ring, and in the midst of all this confusion, Kurt Angle re-emerged, surprising The Undertaker with a quick roll-up to get the win. Check this one out though, even if the finish sounds a little far-fetched and a little silly, the match itself was still pretty good. Undertaker rightfully felt cheated out of the World Wrestling Federation Championship, and so the American Badass 
Taz was added to the six-man Hell in a Cell WWF Championship match at Armageddon. Taker said he would make someone famous at this pay-per-view, resulting in Rikishi taking a choke slam off the top of the cell and landing on the back of a nicely cushioned truck. Kurt Angle successfully retained the WWF Championship during this Hell in a Cell match. It's a landmark showdown of the Attitude Era that also featured Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock and Triple H, and it's a match you need to see if you haven't already. The Undertaker started 2001 off with a win over Rikishi on Raw. This victory earned Taker a spot in a triple threat match held on the January 4th episode of SmackDown that also featured Steve Austin and Kane. The winner of this match would be named the number one contender for Kurt Angle's WWF Championship. Due to Rikishi's interference, Steve Austin pinned The Undertaker and the American Badass would get a little revenge the following week when he attacked Rikishi and Kane. Taker would have to enter the 2001 Royal Rumble in order to get a title shot. The dead man drew number 25 but he was eventually eliminated by Rikishi. But strangely it looked like the Brothers of Destruction were back in business during the Rumble match when both men joined forces to clear the ring. The Brothers of Destruction reunion was confirmed on the January 25th episode of Smackdown when Kane helped Undertaker fend off Rikishi and Haku. Taker and Kane would get a WWF tag team title shot at the No Way Out 2001 pay per view when they took on Edge and Christian and the champions, the Dudley Boys, in a triple threat tables match. The Dudley Boys were able to retain the titles. Another bout that took place at No Way Out was the three stages of Hell match pitting Triple H against Stone Cold Steve Austin. After Triple H won the match, the game felt that he deserved to main event WrestleMania next month, saying that he had defeated everyone in the World Wrestling Federation including the WWF Champion The Rock. Undertaker reminded Hunter that the game had not defeated the dead man on pay per view. Undertaker wanted Triple H at WrestleMania 17 and to ensure he got his wish, the dead man got his little brother to lift Stephanie McMahon over a balcony, forcing WWF Commissioner William Regal to book the match. At WrestleMania 17, Taker and Triple H faced off in the semi-main spot, and it was an excellent showdown, one of my favourite Undertaker matches of 2001, and a great way to kick off the Triple H vs Undertaker WrestleMania saga that would continue on in the years that followed. Undertaker won a hard fought match against the game on the grandest stage of all, helping to make WrestleMania 17 one of the most well received Mania events in history. Shortly afterwards Triple H joined forces with Stone Cold Steve Austin, a man who recently shocked the world by turning heel, and the two man power trip would set their sights on The Undertaker and Kane. On the April 19th 2001 episode of Smackdown, the Brothers of Destruction won the WWF Tag Titles after defeating Edge and Christian in an Otis qualification match, but the two man power trip interfered at the end of the match, sending a message to the new Tag Team Champions. Triple H had won the IC Championship two weeks prior, and Stone Cold Steve Austin was now the WWF Champion, so the Brothers of Destruction vs the two man power trip tag team match at Backlash 2001 would have every belt on the line. Austin and Triple H won the match, meaning this star studded heel tag team now held the tag titles, the IC title and the WWF Championship. The rivalry would get cut short though as Triple H suffered an injury, you can learn all about this in my two man power trip video on the channel. Before the feud ended, Taker had a WWF Championship match with Steve Austin at the Judgment Day pay per view, but due to Vince McMahon and Triple H's interference, the dead man was unable to capture his fourth WWF Championship. In the run up to Judgment Day, The Undertaker's wife was used in the storyline, and we'd be seeing a lot more of The Undertaker's wife in the weeks that followed. And so, with the two man power trip now in the past, the Brothers of Destruction went their separate ways. The Undertaker would have his hands full with a mystery stalker. Pretty much immediately following Judgment Day, candid footage would air on Raw and Smackdown showing us The Undertaker's wife at home. A voice would talk over the footage describing what Sarah was up to and how this stalker was waiting for the right time to approach the dead man's wife. Not only that, but the stalker had been recording footage of The Undertaker at home too. 
Taker was obviously upset, he wanted answers and he wanted to know who had this death wish. On the June 18th 2001 episode of Raw, the stalker was revealed as none other than WCW's Diamond Dallas Page. A questionable choice here but anyway, it looked like we were going to see a series of competitive Undertaker vs DDP matches on television, only this didn't happen. The Undertaker made quick work of Page at the 2001 King of the Ring and the feud even saw Undertaker's wife pin DDP during an episode of Raw. It was a wasted opportunity for sure. Diamond Dallas Page vs The Undertaker could have been special, but the creative and booking decisions surrounding this angle and indeed the whole WCW invasion seriously hurt any potential dream matches and dream feuds. After dealing with DDP in dominating fashion, The Undertaker joined Team WWF in the battle against WCW and ECW. I spent practically all of last week talking about the invasion, I'll link some videos in the description if you want to learn more here but in a nutshell, all you need to know right now is that the WWF wiped the floor with the WCW and ECW alliance. The Undertaker was used as one of Vince McMahon's main WWF guys and yeah, that's it really. The invasion angle wrapped up at the 2001 Survivor Series when Team WWF beat Team WCW in the winner takes all Survivor Series match. The Undertaker and Kane represented the WWF in this bout. Also during the invasion, the Brothers of Destruction made history by becoming the WCW Tag Team Champions, the first time the titles changed hands on WWF programming, and they also won the WWF Tag Team Championships at the same time. On the November 26, 2001 episode of Raw, two weeks after the Survivor Series, The Undertaker turned heel once again. A week prior, Vince McMahon had introduced the world to the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club when William Regal puckered up to keep his job. The following week on Raw, Vince McMahon wanted Jim Ross to do the exact same thing. The Undertaker came to the ring and we all thought the dead man was going to make sure Jim Ross didn't have to go through with this embarrassing ordeal. The Undertaker said he had been kissing Vince McMahon man's behind for 11 years, and when Jim Ross said he wouldn't do the same, The Undertaker attacked Ross, forcing Jim to kiss his boss's backside as the audience looked on in disbelief. To solidify his new heel status, The Undertaker destroyed Taz the same week on Smackdown, attacking the human suplex machine with steel steps after getting the victory. Before this match even happened, The Undertaker also attacked the hardcore champion Rob Van Dam, setting up a title match between the two men at the Vengeance pay-per-view. To go along with this new heel persona, The Undertaker cut his hair, the Phenom's long locks were now gone as Mark Calloway ushered in yet another change to his successful Undertaker gimmick. The Undertaker tweaked his character in and out of the ring to be a little more aggressive, he would bully his opponents, and he would brawl a whole lot more. Eventually, this incarnation of The Undertaker would be known as Big Evil, and the dead man would keep this version of the Undertaker going for quite some time. Taker was able to capture the Hardcore Championship from Rob Van Dam at Vengeance, and if you want to see an example of how the Undertaker would evolve his character, check out this match at Vengeance. At the 2002 Royal Rumble, The Undertaker was eliminated by Maven, a WWF newcomer who had just won the Tough Enough reality TV show, and this was seen as a huge upset. Someone who found great humour in this elimination was The Rock. Angered at being made fun of by the People's Champion, Taker cost Rocky the number one contendership for the WWF title, resulting in Rocky costing Taker the hardcore title in a match against Maven. This led to The Undertaker facing The Rock at No Way Out 2002, a sort of forgotten match here that I always thought was pretty good. Storyline WWF co-owner Ric Flair interfered during the match when The Undertaker tried to use a lead pipe against the People's Champion. The Rock eventually won the match and now the dead man was coming after the nature boy. Initially, Ric Flair refused to wrestle The Undertaker. He was the co-owner of the WWF and he didn't want to compete in any kind of matches. That all changed when The Undertaker attacked Ric's son, David. Flair was forced to give up his half of the WWF in order to wrestle The Undertaker at WrestleMania 18, although the WWF directors did say that the ownership situation would get reviewed following the biggest show of the year. And so, we had two legends stepping into the ring at WrestleMania 
WrestleMania, the Nature Boy Ric Flair and The Undertaker. Ric Flair said himself that it was The Undertaker who requested this match. The Phenom wanted to have some ring time with The Nature Boy at WrestleMania and Flair said he was thrilled to have this opportunity. Flair hadn't competed in a WrestleMania match in 10 years and his last WWF match was against Vince McMahon at the 2002 Royal Rumble, a match that Flair went into with a ton of self-confidence issues. At WrestleMania 18 though, Undertaker and Flair put on a tense old school wrestling match that proved to fans across the world that the Nature Boy could still hang with the big boys. The Undertaker may have scored the win at WrestleMania, but his problems were just beginning. The first ever WWF draft happened shortly after the biggest show of the year. The whole WWF roster was split with superstars going to Vince McMahon's SmackDown and superstars going to Ric Flair's Monday Night Raw. The Undertaker was Ric Flair's first selection for Monday Night Raw and the dead man wasn't too keen on working for the Nature Boy. The remainder of 2002 and 2003 would see The Undertaker capture even more champions gold, there would be more big matches and the dead man would turn babyface once again. Join me next time when we continue our look at the entire career of The Undertaker, covering the rest of 2002 right up until the 2003 Survivor Series.